Hi, my name is Ashley Mann and I run the blog RVinspiration.com and I wanted to share with you how this winter my husband and I made a foam board skirting for our fifth wheel RV. In the past we had made RV skirting out of recycled billboard vinyl. It was a nice vinyl tarp skirting that I wrote a blog post about and had a lot of people tell me that they used my method and made skirting for their own RVs, but this year we're in a mobile home park that doesn't allow vinyl skirting and only allows foam board skirting. So we had to remake our skirting, which at first I wasn't very happy about, but um, I think in the end I ended up really kind of liking what we ended up with. So I'm gonna show you the videos we took as we did this project. So this might be the top performing video on YouTube. Oh my gosh. Wait, <laughs> that's recorded now, isn't it? <laughs> you want to give a quick explanation of what we're doing? Yep. Um, the, fir the first thing we're doing here is um, marking the foam board to see where we're going to cut it. Um, we want to make sure we cut it nice and straight because we're using exactly two feet widths and if we um, cut and it gets off then we'll have one part that's too tall and the other part will be too short so using a magic marker to mark yeah and so we're also using a knife instead of uh the razor or like the kind of yeah we were using a box cutter razor blade before um the knife i decided to try because it has a longer blade so we can more easily stick it all the way through the Here. Sh sh we, can, we can show yeah. basically the way that we're doing it. Yeah. Oh. That's all I can over here. So I'm just doing, first of all, I'm doing a cut that just goes in a little bit as, to score as a guide. It. And just trying to get all the way through relatively straight. relatively and then <clears throat> going a little deeper and we did it two different ways one one just going a little deeper through the cut and that lets us bow it a little bit and then if actually you'll help you basically once you bow it you can see the lines really really well and cut all the way through and show this knife again that we got this is a knife that we picked up at Lowe's that was being sold along with the razor blades. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we're gonna go ahead and start um, taping the foam board in place. Um, I've seen some confusion from people online about whether the silver side goes facing in or out. And it's really important. I mean, the whole point of this silver material is that it reflects heat as well as light. Um, so you want the heat that's under your RV to be reflected back under the RV and stay there. If you have the silver part on the outside, all that's doing is any sunlight that's hitting it is being reflected away from your RV, which doesn't do any good. And then you've got this white side that's pointless underneath. I know there are some that have silver on both sides, but if you have the kind that's just silver on one side, um, you definitely want that on the inside. So um, also we could, trim it to be totally flush to the bottom of the RV, but I feel like that's unnecessary extra work. So we're just gonna um, lay this piece right up against the edge of the side of the RV there. Um, this is a nice easy spot to start with, we feel, since it's all flat. And uh, we're just gonna tape it right along the top with HVAC tape, which is this stuff right here. It's a foil type of tape that um, it is very, very sticky. Um, it's also an all-weather, all-temperature type of tape. You can get it um, at Lowe's or any hardware store. And it has a, um, a backing that you peel off um, before you stick it on. Um, also, we had a great tip from a neighbor of ours, which is since we've got this gravel here, um, we're going to use the claw, the, the hammer, to dig a little trench um, to lay the edge of the foam into and that way hopefully once it's taped in place you can push the gravel back up like 
that and it'll hold it in place and keep it from blowing around. Um, so if you don't have gravel, we have some other ideas for what you can do, but that's what we recommend with the gravel. Yeah, and th another thing to point out is that we, we went and cut out a bunch of this, but not all of it, and kind of laid out uh, the general heights. So some of them that are like the wheel wells are a little bit different uh, as well as like all this line here is all I think three feet and two, then two or, feet, two feet yeah. yeah and then there's this gap here that we don't have anything cut out for yet so we do, we're just doing kind of the easy parts first and then we'll kind of recut uh, the, the specific parts afterwards. Yep. All right so we're um, starting to tape this foam in place now and um, the the method we've decided on is to just put little pieces along the foam to hold it in place, go around the, ho the whole RV doing that, and then once we get it all in place we'll come back with um, more tape if we have enough left over or whatever we decide to do to make it look a little better as well. Yeah, and the problem we kind of had was uh, initially that you kind of have to L, you have, it's kind of an L shape that you have to get the tape the in. The tape is, you can actually buy a wider tape if you, if you want to, but what the tape we've got is too narrow to come all the way around the foam and then up and then onto the RV. So we're just taping along the edge of the foam and on the RV and it actually seems to be holding along that edge well enough that it's not gonna go anywhere. It's just a matter of later we wanna seal up the cracks between and also um, maybe make it look better. So at this spot we have enough um, clearance to actually put the foam board up under the edge without having to cut it. And so that's what we decided to do because we've got these hooks that are in the way and also um, I think it'll just look kind of neater once it's done. We were doing this um, edge or end part now underneath the front of our fifth wheel. Um, we cut out this notch which we're going to have to kind of fill in that gap a little bit um, to go around the shape there. Um, we also filled in the bottom with some gravel. And we're using white duct tape to join the pieces um, so that the tape blends in a little bit. I use these to hold it in place and then I'll run a piece all the way down along it as well. On this side we have grass and dirt instead of gravel. Um, actually on the gravel side it's not just gravel there's concrete underneath the gravel but since we don't have concrete on this side we used tent stakes to pound into the ground to hold the um, the skirting in place. There's one here and one down there. We also put a few on the back so that will keep it from blowing around. Um, then we have it secured on the top with tape which will add more tape as needed once we're done placing everything. Here I'm going to show you how we went around the um, fender area in the wheel wells of our skirting. Um, so for this side um, we, we cut out a space cut out these notches for the fenders. We actually cut a little too low, so I had to patch it with the white duct tape there. Um, and then we cut out this one. And then along this edge, the skirt, the piece of board was too short. So to fill in this gap, I cut a piece of foam and taped it with the white duct tape from the other side. And I'll show you what it looks like on the other side. See, this is just a strip, just like that. And there's the other one over there. So that's how we did um, this side. So while I was working on the other side, my husband was working on this side, and he had a different approach. He just unscrewed the, the fender all together and then tape the board over it. Um, so for the fender, land under there, and he taped, or I taped the screws to the back so they don't get lost. And it'll just stay there until we're ready to um, take off the skirting and then we can screw it right back on. Um, I might cover these holes with something that keeps them, I'm a little worried about them rusting, but I mean, our sh um, should be okay. So that's another approach you can take. All right, we're gonna uh, wrap it up for today. We're kind of losing our light. So um, we've got a nice mess to clean up before 
the sun goes completely down and then we will continue the project tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna kind of show you what we've done so far. We've got a good amount of it cut and taped on. Tomorrow we'll have just a little more to do um, in some kind of trickier areas and then we'll need to go along and fill gaps and um, we'll probably use some more of the white duct tape to pretty it up a little bit. But we started around 1 or 2 p.m. today and I think um, for it's since it's winter it's um, only about 5 and the sun's going down maybe 5 30 but I think we got a pretty good amount accomplished in the few hours we've been working on it and we should be able to finish it up tomorrow pretty easily. We finally finished up our skirting so I'm going to show you the final result here. Um, we've added this strip of the foil tape along the top both to help hold the skirting in place, help keep in some of the warm air underneath, and just to give it a more finished look along the edge of the RV. This area here we might um, want to be a little more thorough with if we lived in a colder climate. Um, last year I took some clear vinyl, a shower curtain actually, and lined the inside of that area, but um, in Missouri I think that what we've got will be just fine. We used the white duct tape to seal the gaps, not the well, gaps, but also the uh, transitions between the two pieces. Here's how we did the back. Went around the hitch down there. This area, I had to kind of cobble together a little more to go around the water and make it to where I could remove it later um, without having to completely tear into our skirting. Another area I'd probably want to be a little more thorough with if I um, wasn't um, pretty certain that we won't have a problem with things freezing underneath. Of course, um, if we did worry about it, I could always get a remote thermometer to stick underneath the RV in the area of our plumbing and make sure that everything was staying above freezing. And I'm not really too worried about the wind blowing it away either. Um, the way we packed up gravel around it, it's held in place pretty tightly there. And then over in the grass here, we've got the stakes on both sides holding the skirting in place. Wanted to point out one thing about our sewage hose. Um, we do have it on a, a piece of vinyl guttering. So that, and we have it propped up on one side a little bit so that it runs downhill. And we keep our black tank closed, except when we're dumping it. And the gray tank we leave open, but it drains fast enough and we're not in a cold enough climate that it's not likely to freeze between the uh, tank and the hole in the ground. Um, if it wasn't going downhill, then we would want to make sure it was going downhill or else um, if there was some water that got trapped in a dip or uh, a curve or something, then we could have some problems with the sewer backing up because of a frozen clog in the middle and we certainly wouldn't want that. Um, but if you live in an area where the sewer hose um, is exposed to temperatures where the water might freeze just passing through it in just a few seconds, you might want to go ahead and protect your sewer hose as well. Um, I've seen people run it through a piece of PVC pipe that adds a little bit of protection from cold water, cold weather, sorry. Um, you could even wrap it, like make a uh, enclosure out of the same foam material um, and kind of cover it up that way. I had mentioned that we had an idea of how to seal the bottom, the bottom of the skirting if you are on a concrete pad. 
And um, so I thought I would go ahead and tell you about the, those ideas. One of them was what our neighbor told us, which is to take a can of spray foam and just run a bead of the spray foam along the bottom of the skirting next to the concrete. And it could probably work on grass too if you have gaps that you need to fill in. Um, after you remove the skirting, the spray foam should be pretty easy to just pull up. Um, if you're worried about it sticking to the concrete and not coming up, then you could test it on a little piece of a small patch of concrete and see how hard it is to to pry off. Um, the other option I've seen is to lay uh, sandbags or sand logs along the edge of the skirting to hold them in place that way. So I think either of those ideas should work if you're on concrete and don't have the option of building up the gravel or um, or pounding in tent stakes. I have to admit I was a little bit uh, discouraged about having to do this project after we had already come up with what I thought was a pretty good solution. But now that we've got it done, I do like how it looks and I don't have any concerns that our pipes are gonna freeze here in Missouri. Um, and since we're planning to be here for a while, we might even end up using it next winter. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with the end result.